Hi everybody and welcome to today's LEGO Technic video. What I'm going to be presenting to you today is my latest creation. It's a two-speed automatic gearbox. Now this gearbox is based on the idea of two degrees of freedom within a gear chain. Now I have presented a gearbox based on this idea in the past. It was a three-speed automatic gearbox. I also presented a video on the theory of analyzing two degrees of freedom uh, gear chains. Uh, so those videos are well worth watching. I'll post some links in the comments. But um, yes, today's video is going to be on a new variation that I've created on this concept. And I'll be explaining that to you today. Okay, so what do I mean by a system with two degrees of freedom? Well, it's probably easy to talk about a system with one degree of freedom first, just to demonstrate the concept. So here I've got uh, three axles, and those axles are related by three gears, or connected by three gears, and that creates a relationship between the axles. And what that means is if I turn any one axle uh, at a certain speed or place it at a certain angle, that means the speed and the angle of all the other axles are predetermined by those gearing ratios. I can only turn one axle, or I need to turn one to determine the output of the other two. And if I try to turn two of them, I can't because the uh, relationship between them is fixed. I can't turn two axles independently. So that makes this a one degree of freedom system. There's only one axle that I can turn independently um, and not more than one. So if I've got a system with two degrees of freedom, so again here I've got a uh, setup with uh, three axles, so three inputs and outputs, you'll be familiar with this as uh, using a differential. And now the difference is that I can turn one of them and you can see the other two rotating. However, I can in fact turn two of them independently. Uh, the relationship between the differential, because it's a uh, three input device, you need to um, you know, have the position of two of them to determine the third one and that means I've got two degrees of freedom in the sense that I can turn two axles independently completely independently, I can turn in these two or, or these two and you need two to determine uh, deterministically the output of the third so that makes that a two degree of freedom system okay so how can we turn a two degrees of freedom system into a gearbox well one way of doing it is to create a setup like this what I've got here is at the bottom I've got an input and an output and in between input and output we've got two differentials uh, in this configuration and what you find is that as you turn of course the input the output rotates but there is in fact two degrees of freedom as to how these other gears can rotate so for example I can hold uh, the left gear chain still now the uh, right gears turn, if I hold the right gear still, then the left gears turn. And the difference between the uh, left gears and the right gears, of course, is the gearing ratio. So on the left here, I've got pretty much a one-to-one -one gearing ratio, on uh, transmission between input and output. And on the right, I've got two three-to-fives in series, giving a nine-to-twenty-five. So that means if I hold still the left path, then the overall gearing ratio will be nine-to-twenty-five, which represents the low gear. If I hold still the right path, then I'm getting a one-to-one -one gearing ratio between the input and output. And if I let both of them um, you know, rotate as they want to, then you get something in between. Um, you'll get some rotation on the right and some on the left, and the overall gearing ratio between will be somewhere in between one-to-one -one and nine-to-twenty-five. Now, the idea of this gearbox for my previous project was to have the concept of limiting um, you know, putting some resistance on this right-hand path, for example, by using a um, you know a pin with some resistance on it, and connecting that to the gear like that. And what that means is because it's now harder to turn that right path, the path of least resistance is simply uh, the left path. So that means that now the gearing ratio between input and output is simply one to one. However, once there's quite a bit of loading on the output, what will happen is is that uh, this resistance will be overcome uh, because that now becomes a path of least resistance and you'll see some rotation in that right path and now the overall gearing ratio will be reduced uh, again somewhere between that 1 to 1 and 9 to 25 so that's that's a way of automatically switching down the gearing ratio so here we've got a 1 to 1 then as we put that loading on the right path starts to turn and the overall gearing ratio becomes lower which means you've now switched down gears automatically now of course the disadvantage of that system is that you have to overcome this resistance and as that right path gets used uh, you're having to overcome that resistance and that creates quite a bit of uh, torque loss and torque and power loss which is not ideal so uh, my idea for the new gearbox design is to instead of putting a resistance in there 
is simply to block that path and unblock it depending on the torque of the output. So the idea is, is that um, you know, you've, you've, you're blocking this output, you've then got a one to one gearing ratio and as soon as you see enough torque on the output you release that block and then um, most of the, uh, the, right of the, uh, the right path is used for the transmission. Uh, switching down gears down to 9 to 25. Uh, so that's the central idea of my new gearbox. Okay, I'll just show you a motorized version of that idea. It's a little bit easier to demonstrate uh, when it's actually driven by a motor rather than manually. So I've just connected a large power functions motor. I'll turn that on. Uh, we can see that uh, the output is turning very quickly. It's using that one-to-one -one path on the left. On here we've got that friction pin gear that is stopping or um, you know creating resistance on the right path but as soon as I add some loading to the output what that means is that the path of least resistance now becomes a right path because of the gearing ratio it's got more torque and you'll see that the right path will start turning and creating a lower gearing ratio and higher torque on the output so that is the main idea of this type of gearbox now like I said before the main issue is that resistance is creating a lot of torque losses so even though it does change down it does create a little bit more torque. Uh, those uh, the increased torque is offset by the losses in this gearing here, and you probably find that uh, to make this work really well, you need a, a much lower gearing ratio on the left here, maybe a one to nine or something like that, to uh, really take advantage of this principle. Okay, so I've implemented that idea into this uh, gearbox. So I'll just explain how this one works. So at the bottom here, we've got our input. That input, like I said before, goes through the two degrees of uh, freedom differentials. So on the left here we've got that one-to-one -one gearing ratio path, and on the right we've got the two three-fifths in series to create the 9 to 25. That then drives a torque detection differential at the top here for the ultimate output. And once enough torque is detected on the output, it will drive and rotate this gearing system uh, on the side of the gearbox, which then connects through to a rotary catch in the centre there. And once that rotates, it will engage or disengage that uh, switch in the middle. And that switch is connected back onto uh, the uh, secondary path, which has got the lowering gearing ratio. So at the moment, with the way the switch is engaged onto that blue clutch gear, so that blue clutch gear, in fact, uh, can't move. It's attached to a gear that is uh, whose axle is static. So what that means is that this path is at the moment it's blocked it can't be rotated and therefore the gearing ratio between input and output is simply that one-to-one -one path along the bottom but as soon as there's enough torque detected like I said it will disengage that switch and once that's disengaged it will allow this path uh, to rotate the uh, second degree of freedom and then that will become the preferred path between the input and output and therefore switch down to a lower gearing ratio now the advantage of this of course is that you're not actually switching any gears on the main path so normally with a um, automatic gearbox you have to switch gears and you have to engage and disengage a gearing system with this particular design you're not really disengaging or engaging any of the main power uh, torque uh, paths um, you are simply blocking uh, one of the paths or unblocking it so which is uh, relatively straightforward there's not a lot of torque on that gear it's quite easy to block and unblock and that is one advantage of this design so I'll just demonstrate how this works in action Okay, so I've connected the large power functions motor to the input and connected that to the battery box. So I'll just turn that on and demonstrate the gearbox in action. So as you can see from underneath, uh, we are using the one-to-one uh, -one gear ratio path. The other path is blocked. That's the lower gearing ratio path is blocked. And as soon as I start putting some loading on the output, uh, what will happen is that the torque detector differential will activate and start rotating the gearing system, which will drive that rotary catch to uh, disengage the block on that uh, low gearing path and allow that to rotate. So I'll just demonstrate that as I put some loading on. You can see that torque differential wanted to turn. And what I've done, I've actually tuned um, this gear switching at the point where the motor is almost stalling. So that is um, expected behavior. So as I do that, it'll switch. And now you can see that the uh, secondary path at the bottom here is being used and you can see that one-to-one -one gearing ratio is in fact not rotating at all so that means that the um, gearing ratio is now 9 to 25 and I can feel that the torque on the output is much much stronger uh, which is what you'd expect so this is how the gearbox works just like that I can uh, show you from the other side we can see the 
rotary catch, rotating and disengaging that block on the uh, the secondary path. So that is, uh, yeah, this is how this gearbox works. I think it's quite a good design. It's a very interesting concept. It's quite different from some of the other designs and the fact that you're not actually disengaging the gear on the main drive path, which I think uh, makes a big difference to the overall uh, performance of the gearbox. Now you can modify this gearbox to reduce the gearing ratio of the secondary gear, so in this case I'll replace that 3 to 5 with a 1 to 3 or a 3 to 1, which means the overall gearing ratio is now 5 to 1 between the input and output for the secondary gear. And the other advantage of the, this gearbox is in fact it's bi-directional in the sense that you can have the gearbox uh, the motor going in one direction and we can switch gears, or we can have the motor going in the reverse direction and we can still switch gears, unlike some of my other previous designs. Um, they only work in one direction because of the nature of the switching mechanism. So this switching mechanism can go uh, in either direction to uh, switch those gears downwards. Alright, so that was my new uh, two-speed automatic gearbox design. Hope you liked this video. Please like and subscribe and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.